In the previous movie, we initialized our character for human IK by creating the following components. An HIK character object to represent the human IK enabled character, an HIK character state object to store the character's stance based on the translation and rotation of each of its nodes, an HIK property set state object to configure how the human IK solvers will handle the character, and an HIK effector set state object to store the target positions for each of the character's body parts and associated constraints. In this movie, we'll use these components with the human IK inverse kinematics IK solver to calculate a new position for our character at runtime. At each frame, the game engine updates your character's pose by calculating the position and rotation of each of its joints using forward kinematics, also known as FK. Human IK acts as an additional layer on top of this process by first retrieving this FK pose from the game engine. It then sends this information to its IK solver along with the components we created during initialization. The IK solver generates a new character pose based on your configuration, which you then send back to the game engine. Let's go over each step to examine the specifics of this process. First, you must retrieve your character's current FK pose from the game engine as a starting point, and use it to update the HIK character state object. A common method for doing this is to call the HIK set node state TQSFV function for each node in the HIK character state with the following arguments. Two pointers, one to the HIK character and another to HIK character state. The node ID of the desired node whose position and rotation you are retrieving. And three separate arrays of four floating point numbers representing the translation, quaternion rotation, and scale values of the current node in global space. Note that each function call you make only updates a single node at a time. This works well if you only need to update a small number of nodes like a head or a leg. However, to synchronize multiple nodes at once, say for an entire character, it's recommended that you use a data set and an accompanying data description. A data set is a block of memory divided into multiple data blocks that each contains the translation, orientation, and scale values of a single node. The accompanying data description defines the memory layout of this data set, such as the order in which the nodes are defined, the size of their respective data block, and so on. Note that using a data set is more memory efficient than doing multiple single node function calls, but also requires more setup and memory management. For more information on setting up a data set, refer to the Human IK documentation. Once you have updated the HIK character state object with the current FK pose, you need to update the HIK effector set state object. This sets each effector with the translation and rotation that you want the body part to exhibit in the final pose. Let's say that you want to make your character's climbing animation more realistic at runtime by having him reach for the handles along the way. For this, you would need to update the character's hands and feet effectors of the HIK effector set state object based on the location of these target handles. There are two different approaches to update the HIK effector set state object. To set one or more effectors directly, call the HIK set effector state TQSFV function with the following arguments a pointer to the HIK effector set state object, the unique ID of the effector to set, which is different from the node ID of the corresponding joint, and three separate arrays of four floating point numbers as arguments, representing the new translation, quaternion rotation, and scale values of the effector in normalized space. Note that you could also use a data set with description to update multiple effectors at once. Alternatively, you can also set all effectors at once by applying offsets to the current values from the HIK character state object. This approach is useful when the change applied to the current pose at runtime is really small, say when your character is idle on slightly uneven terrain, and also when you want to chain multiple update calls such that each update is based on the result of the previous one. You first need to initialize the HIK effector set state object 
which sets its effector's translation and orientation to match the nodes within the HIK character state object. Do this by calling the HIK effector set from character function with the following arguments. Pointers to your HIK character object, the HIK effector set state object to initialize, the HIK character state object to use as reference, and the HIK property set state object that we created in the initialization phase in the previous video. You can then retrieve each effector's matrix using the HIK get effector state TQSFV function, apply offsets to the values returned, and reapply the results using the HIK set effector state TQSFV function. Now that you've updated both HIK character state and HIK effector set state objects, the IK solver can generate an output pose. By default, the IK solver generates the output pose based only on the current FK pose. To change this, you need to enable the reach, pull, and resist constraints for each effector in the HIK effector set state object. Call the HIK set translation active and HIK set rotation active functions to set the desired effector's reach translation and reach rotation respectively. These reach constraints determine the IK blending in position and rotation between each pose. For example, if your character has an idle FK pose and its arm effector is lifted, then the reach constraints let you pick any pose within these extremes. Call the HIK set pull function to set an effector's pull value, which is the weight it has over the rest of the skeleton. For example, if you enable the pull value of your character's wrist and then move it past its point of full extension, it will drag the rest of your character's limbs, which results in a full body IK solve. To oppose that weight, call the HIK set resist function to set an effector's resist value. You could use it to keep the elbow joint bent while pulling the rest of the body. Each of these functions requires the following arguments. A pointer to the HIK effector set state object, the unique ID of the effector whose constraint you're setting, and a floating point value between 0 and 1 inclusive to set the value of the constraint for the specified effector. The IK solver has almost all the information it needs to calculate a final pose for your character. Before you launch the IK solver, you need to decide which solving operations it should undertake by setting its solving steps. This can range from activating all solving steps to activating only a subset based on your character's motions. Limiting the amount of steps the solver should carry out is a good way to decrease CPU consumption at runtime, which we'll cover in the next video. Call the HIK set solving step function with the following arguments a pointer to the HIK effector set state object, and a unique ID to identify the single or multiple solving steps to perform. The only initialization component that we haven't updated yet is the HIK property set state object. That's because it's already initialized with a coherent set of default values, so we'll just move ahead with the solving. Just be aware that you can adjust your character's solving properties by setting the appropriate mode or value. Consult the Human IK documentation for a complete list of solving properties. It's finally time to launch the IK solver to generate your character's final pose. Call the HIK solve for effector set function with pointers to all of your updated objects as arguments. The IK solver produces a new pose and stores it in the HIK character state object. From this point, you must retrieve this pose using the HIK get node state TQSFV function with the following arguments. A pointer to the HIK character state object, the node ID of the node whose matrix you are retrieving, and three separate arrays of four floating point numbers to store the translation quaternion rotation, and scale values of the current node. Depending on your own data structure, you could also use transform matrices or a data set to retrieve this pose. All that remains is for you to send back the retrieved values for each node to the corresponding joint of the character in your game engine.
Repeat this procedure at every frame to properly IK solve your character. In the next video, we'll look at how to use the Human IK Retargeting Solver, as well as highlight best practices for general memory optimization.